you know what? God's going God's to bless us to where we can get a Hey, I did this. I I had this set up Wednesday. <laughs> Pretty good videos, wasn't Could have had it Wednesday. You know, I like I like to. Uh, a lot of people say y'all not supposed to have lights down there. Y'all not supposed to do this. Listen to me. God's word never changes. Right. Never. But the world changes and the way you present things do. Right. If it takes us feeding people, I said this a few times to bring lights in there and having people can come up here and praise and worship. Listen, I see more people getting more comfortable stepping out. The hardest thing that I've ever done in my life. I mean, I'd rather take a beating in it as when I would be in a church and God would be dealing with my heart and to step out and walk up to the altar. Boy, that's, that's a hard deal. It don't seem like it. What's the big deal? And, you know, now I think, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? But it's hard because the devil don't want to turn you loose. And he's got ties on you and he, he makes it feel like People's going to look at you and people's going to laugh at you. But what do we say down here at Labor of the Field? Real men serve God. Real women serve God. And if you want a different life, you got to step out. Step out of the comfort zone. Something makes you feel nervous. Step out and do it. Amen. And watch the blessings that God pours out in your life. Amen. If it takes walking up here and praising God at the at the watching a video. Do that first. Next thing you know, you'll be down here on your knees praying. Next thing you know, you'll be saying, Pastor, will you leave me, help me pray? I, I, I want to I wanna get saved. So let me tell you something. Don't never be ashamed of having a good life. Don't be ashamed of having a life where you can just do what's right, man. What's wrong with doing right? You know, I, I wonder. I, I've been there on both sides. I, but, you know, I, I love to do what's right. Man. Am I perfect? No. I, you know, I need to, this, this time, there's a conflict there about I got to do good, but I'm going to mess up sometimes. I, I'm going to do good, and I'm going to walk a narrow path, and I'm going to serve God. But things happen in my life and knock me down. But I gotta get back up, look straight ahead, and keep on going. And keep on going. Come on. You can't never quit. Look, it ain't never how you start nothing. It's how you, it's how you finish. Amen. It's how you finish. Keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. I wanna keep on keeping on serving God for the rest of my life. I wanna do more for God than I ever done for the devil. And how am I gonna do that? I'm going to keep on keeping on. We're going to keep on keeping on having church. We're going to keep on having Friday night service where people can come down here and serve God instead of being up here drinking, drugging, and doing craziness. And I, I'm going to tell you, I used to come here, when I first started, it was behind Eddie's. I'd go up there and I'd come in here and I'd have a good time. They having fun. They ain't drinking. I'd leave, go home, do my thing. I start. I didn't start at twelve anyway. <laughs> I'd go to this. I said, "Come on, man, please. Come on, man, go. Come on, man, just go." And I got to going, and I liked it. And it that was a starting point in my life. Then he said, "Hey, man, you need to go to rehab." <laughs> I said, I said, man, I got a friend of mine, his name's Alex Rich. He said, let me take you down there and get you in. He said, you gotta help you. I said, man, come on, dude. You, you pushed me too hard. Well, we, one day we was out riding around. He shot off down there. We talked with the man. The man said, come on down. I said, I don't need, I don't need it. He said, well, if you decide you do, you know where I'm at. 
Two weeks later, I called. And uh, I checked in. Old Ty said, come see me. And I thought, man, why, what am I listening to this little friend for? <laughs> but I'll tell you something. God's going to put somebody in your life that's going to help you. Amen. You hear me? And when, and when you when you find that person, you always respect them. Amen. If you find somebody that's good to you, wants to feed you, wants to help you in ways of your life that nobody else has ever tried to, you better respect it. Because God has sent that person to you. He sends people to help you. To where you can break the sin in your life. Adam and Eve started all this thing years ago, and I think when I get to heaven, I'm going to punch Adam in the mouth. I'm <laughs> because we have to suffer because we've got generational curses in our life. This thing come from your great, 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 great. This is just been flowing down the road. And everything gets worse and gets worse and gets. I want to tell you, I want you to look at the world today. It's bad out there, man. It's bad. People living like animals. Going to jail, people shooting people. You know before you shoot somebody, if you if you ain't doing it for the right reason, you go in jail for life. But you get so wrapped up in your mind, when you out of your mind, you don't care at the time. <coughs> it's bad out there, y'all. The world's bad. And I'll tell you something. I know you're going to say, well, all preachers say that. It's the end of times. Amen. Yes, it, is. it is the end of times. And if the Lord come back today, where would you go? If you, if we had an earthquake and the building caved in on us, just like, we're just talking. And it killed all of us. It could happen. What well, if somebody busted through the door and shot everybody in here? Hey, it happens. Don't think it can't happen here. It happens everywhere. Where would we go? You know, uh, we got to have a life. A balanced life. But the good's got to outweigh the bad. You hear me? The good has that has got to outweigh the bad in your life. If the bad's outweigh, you know that. I'm going to tell you what you do. You get up every morning, you brush your teeth, look in the mirror, and ask yourself, where am I at in life? Where am I at? If you look in the mirror and you hate yourself as soon as you glance at yourself, I'm gonna tell you something. I know where you at, I know where you at. Because I've been there. Felt worthless. Felt hopeless. Felt disgusted. My mama raised me better than me living like I'm doing. Amen. Out here acting like a fool, sticking needles in my arms and here, taking people's money, messing people up, doing the junk that I used to do. Thank God I got saved. Thank you, God. I hated myself. I look in the mirror, I hated myself. Things that I've done to my kids, I, I, I kept up. Anderson County, Carol Lowry got me each one of my kids, but I wasn't worth a crap, shouldn't have got them. But I raised them. But they know what I was doing. When I say, go on outside, son, I got to take care of some business. They know what I was doing. That's why one of them's in jail today. For the same thing. That thing jumped off me on him. I got one son, works at Bosch, makes about $32 an hour. Boy, I'm proud of him. I got one, his mama just killed herself not long ago, and he's in having a hard time. Me is their daddy. They don't respect me. They don't respect what I'm saying or what I do because the way I raise them. He goes, here's you some money. Go take, take off. Go skate. Here you go every night. And I've done that. And now, 
I don't know how to make that thing right. I, I, I just, all I do is say, God, you got this. Lord, I worry about him. Brandon, I don't have to worry about him right now. He's in jail. But I, I kind of worry about what's he going to do when he gets out. And, uh, all that stuff's my fault. Yeah, it is. It's your fault how you raise your kids. But you don't know no. I didn't know no better. See, I, I just, it ain't about me tonight, y'all. I'm just, because I don't mind putting myself on the spot. Hey, I was a bad dude. Thought, thought it was cool to do this. Dude, my daddy was like that, raised me like that. Son, you cry, he slapped me. I'll give you something to cry for. That's the way I was raised. And I thought being tough and rough and tough and being out here in the world was the coolest thing in the world. But I was wrong. The coolest thing in the world is serving Jesus Christ. Because that's the only thing in the world. You hear me? It's the only thing that's going to give you peace, joy, love, and happiness. It's the only thing that's going to break the sin in your life. It's for you to receive Christ. And you can't receive Him in your own hand, holding hands with Him. you got to receive Him in your heart. you got to say, God, I surrender to you. I give you my life today. And you know what He does? He grabs your hand and He walks up inside of you. He lives here, inside of you. That's why when you do things that's bad for your body, you defile in the temple of God. You are the temple of God. I, I tell you what gets me people come in. Lord, I pray that you'll come down and have your will in your way. Hey, when I walk in the door, he's going to have his will in his way because he lives in my heart. And that's what I want you to I want him living in your heart. When we get a church that's got... Hundred of hundred people in here with God living in their heart and them do, trying to do the best they can do. That's what we're gonna. He look, He gives us this this church down here to help people. Amen. What's he gonna? When we got a hundred people down here going at it wide open. What, they can't nobody stop us, man. They can't nobody stop us. When you start. In your walk with Christ, it ain't like Shazam. I'm a different person. You are a new creature, but you got to learn. It's a process, and you got to figure out how God is applying and what's He calling me to do in my life. You also got, on the other hand, you got to learn how the devil keeps attacking me. What's he doing? How is he attacking me to make me do bad things? Who's he using? What kind of music is he using? I can listen to some of that music. Dang, I want to go get a beer. I used to get drunk, sit and drink it and cry. <laughs> God, you I miss that girl. <laughs> I'm telling the truth, ain't I? Huh? I'm telling the truth. God, the devil can work with you through keys. I seen him tear this church up through a set of keys. He keep coming. Listen to me. If he is a praise and worship leader in heaven, he can take music and manipulate your mind today. That's what I'm trying to get to. You. That's why you want to cry with you. There's a tear in my beard. You want to start crying? Because he's done put something in it. He's got power. There's power out here in this world that you can't see. There's, it's called sin. There's sin in your... And let me tell you something. Sin will knock at your front door. If you don't go to the door, it'll run around back and knock on that back door. If you don't go to the back door, it's going to throw a brick through you under. It's coming in. Come on, preacher. And you've got to learn how to fight sin. How can I defeat sin in my life? You are no match for the devil today. No match. 
But with Christ living inside of you, there's no weapons formed against you shall prosper. <coughs> Isaiah 54 verse 17 says, there's no weapons formed against you shall prosper with Christ living in your heart. And if we choose to live Get beat up. Misery loves comfort. Get talked about. I don't tell you on the flip side, when you when you serve God and deal with a ministry like we deal with, if you doing something right, people's gonna be talking about you. Amen. Amen. You just don't realize what kind of passion I take for these lives. And these two TVs. If we let people wear hats in church. Right I don't care what nobody right says. That's right. We it ain't what's outside, it's what's in your heart. Amen, right. Right. And I'm gonna Amen. care if they beat me down today. If y'all take up for me, because I'm gonna take up for you. Amen. That's right. I'm gonna go anywhere. If we wanna go somewhere, we're gonna go. The Lord's gonna bless this church. Because we believe in it. And if we start showing that we believe in it and stepping out in faith and get doing things that we're not normally comfortable doing. He's going to bless you more and more. Tony, more and more. Tony says start doing some more. Tony says start stepping out some more. I come in here every day. I start off with this service. I start off with it. I do the things. But you know who's supposed to be doing it? Tony King. Tony King. He's going to come in here. He's going to open up the services. He's going to talk. He's got a calling on his life. I've been knowing it for years. God's been speaking to my heart about what we're going to do. i got ideas. i got visions. And we're going to blow the roof off this building. Amen. If it's too loud, you're too old, so don't come down here. Amen. You hear me? Because we're going to celebrate and have fun and party for you. Hey, listen to me. I tell people, I, told, I might not have told y'all. I used to love the party. I still get the party. I party with the Holy I have Holy Ghost parties. Amen. Amen. I used to deal dope. Now I deal Jesus. Amen. I love life again. Amen. You hear me? I thought I was too far gone that I could never come back. But now I walk in and brush my teeth and walk and you boy, what's up? Man, got a new haircut today. Look, ooh, boy, he slick. Still eat a little bit too much. I gotta join the gym, but I'm gonna do that. <laughs> hey, it's, hey, let's do it. Let's do it. When you get something, when you get something done, it's always something else. You ever notice? No, yeah. Then you get this thing out, then it's something else. But I got news for you today. God knows our hearts. He knows if you love him or if you're playing games with him. He knows. Listen to me. You can love God and still mess up sometimes. Let me tell you something. Uh, addiction. People with addictions. Some people with these big churches, they ain't even got a clue how to deal with you. I'm telling you. Oh, no. They wrong. <laughs> Hypocrites. I know people that's been saved and slipped up and done drugs because they are an addict and sit and cry and repent and, and mean it and mean it from the heart but they messed up I deal with people that do that that get saved and they have a rough road man are we supposed to back up and say nah man we can't fool with you no more no. if we do we need to shut the doors down I don't see how a church can call itself a church that will not let people come into church if they ain't homeless and ain't got shoes and they barefoot. If they come in here barefoot, you know what we're going to do? We're going to send them up to the store and get them some shoes. Amen. We're going to feed them. We're going to love on them. We're going to help guys that's got addictions come up in here and figure it out. We're going to help them. You know, God is going to bless us. He's going to give us more people to come in here and help us do what we're doing. we got a wonderful staff. 
Wonderful. We got a few odds. You know, sometimes we butt heads on things, but I'm gonna tell you something. The staff we got down here now, it's awesome. We kind of butt heads when we don't like it. Now we ain't gonna do it that way. I don't, that's what I want. I don't want that. I don't want that. Well, hey, let's just pray about it. What will God do? And that's, that's what we do. Exactly right. what we need to do. But I want to talk to you tonight about sin and its power being broken in your life. Well, I'm going to hurry up and keep you out too late now. Listen to me. The Word will always set you free. The truth will set you free. I would rather for a man to come up to me and tell me the truth and it be wrong than sit and tell me 15 lies coming up one after another. You hear me? I can work with somebody that will be honest. But I can't work with nobody that tells lies. I can't do it. You know what language the devil speaks? Lies. Lies. Yep, pretty good. <laughs> Turn your Bibles to Romans 6. Sin's power is broken through the love of Jesus Christ. We've got an NLT Bible, and I was supposed to have another preacher here today, so I just had to throw this together, walk in there about 10 minutes, just kind of go find something in the Bible. And this is what God led me to, okay? And uh, it's really easy. I used to sweat this thing. Whew. I got to get up here and speak in front of people. Uh, man, what if I mess up? Well, who cares if I mess up? I might mess up. I might miss the I might, I might not pronounce the word right, but so what? I'm doing what God called me to do. Let me tell you something. I run from this thing for a long time. I run from it, I had ties he was doing, I'd run outreach part, he'd done the church part. I just kind of sat back and come over and make a couple announcements. I know what I was supposed to be doing, he did too. He'd tell me, you may ordain you, man, no. Nah. You know what happened? Ty's done his work. God took him home. The church got thrown on me. He didn't get thrown on me. He just says, boy, well, you're going to preach. And I had to. I had to. And it was at the point to where he just back pushed me in the corner. And you know what, today? It don't even bother me. You can walk up to me and say, you going to preach? Yeah, I can preach. I couldn't preach the other way. I was sick. Coming out both ends. I sure didn't want to stand up here and let y'all see me get sick. <laughs> so I got Bobby Harvey to preach. In five minutes' time, if somebody says, all right, Vernon, you got to preach, I can walk, walk over there and glance through my Bible, and I walk out here and let it go. Now, let me tell you something. It ain't coming from no notes. It's coming from my heart because the Word's in my heart. Amen. Amen. You see me reading the book? No. You see me reading notes? No. i got a marker that I cover. I believe a man's supposed to preach from his heart. Amen. If God lives in your heart and you preach from your heart, it's His word. Does that make sense? Amen. That's, my, that's what I. That's my saying. Anyway. But I want you to know that until you totally listen to me, until you totally surrender it to God, Hide and figure out how the devil is attacking your life. There's some people here that needs to listen to what I'm saying. Because I've been going through it with them for years. There's people in here that know, know who I'm talking to. And I've been going through it with them for years. They'll do the same old thing. The same thing will come up. They'll get this cleared up. They ain't a week. It's in the same old thing. And then they come down here crying. I, bet, I feel like going... Don't even come down here and tell me because I don't want to hear it no more. We've been, we've been doing this for six years now. And you still ain't figured out what's wrong in your life. What you doing? You wave at me, Moe. You ain't talking to you, am I? Huh? Don't wave at me. I ain't trying to put nobody. It's several. There's several. And they go, why can't I get my life straight? It's because you can't give it to God and let Him surrender and tell you what to do. You always want to step your foot in it and try to do it your way and then you end up getting smashed to the ground. Then you come in here, 
Oh my God! What am I gonna do? What did I tell you last year? Think about it. That's the truth. Well then, let's, let's start in here at uh, Romans 6. Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more kindness and forgiveness? Of course not. Since we, since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when we became Christians, we were baptized to one with Christ Jesus. We died with Him. For we died and buried with Christ in our baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Since we have been united with Him in His death, we will also be raised as he was. Let me tell you something right there. We're going to stop right there for a minute. When Christ died, he defeated death. Let me tell you something. Death seems like a bad thing to us. But I promise you today, Tyus Butler, if he could come back, he wouldn't come back. Who would want to come back to hell? Because I've been through enough hell here on this earth. I don't need no more. I don't really want to go to hell. You don't either. Because you already done had enough of it here. And if you ain't learned by now, you would wet. You need to be tearing up the altar and asking somebody to pray for you. Now listen to me. I ain't out, man. I just like to tell people like it is because it is what it is. Jesus Christ is real. Heaven is real. Satan is real. And hell is real too. And you don't want no part of them too. I'm telling you. So what you need to do is get you a game plan in your life. Surrender to God. I don't care if it's, if you got to come down here one day and meet me in the office one on one and say, look man, I want to get saved. I'm kind of bashful and I don't want to get in front of people. You know what we'll do? You can get saved in the office or we'll walk down here. But it needs to happen, y'all. You need to be thinking about it. Think about death. Because if, there's a thing that if you die, there's two things going to happen. You're going to have eternal punishment for not believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Or you're going to have eternal life. Were you walking on streets of gold? No more pain, no more suffering. It's all hunky dory, happy, 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 happy. Like that, what he says on the, that show. Happy, 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 happy. I want to be happy. I want to see the face of Jesus Christ. I want to see Jesus. I want everything that he's got that he'll offer. Anything that he offers, you might say, well, you better be stingy. I, 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 I am. Whatever God offers me, I'm going to take it. Because I want everything. Let me tell you something. He, everybody thinks he's so little that he, he can just give you a little bit of this, give you a little bit of this, give you a little bit of this, ain't nothing left. That's a lie, too, because he got more to give everybody in this room. He can, fill your, all, he can fill everybody in this room's cup up runneth over. It'll runneth over. He can open up the windows of heaven and pour out so many blessings on your life that you can't take them all. So you need to learn how to defeat sin. The first thing you got to do to defeat sin in your life is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you do that, it all starts coming together. Things will start happening. You're going to get knocked down. Boy, death. Hey, at first, what did I do? Everything in the world is going to go wrong. But, if you got Christian people in a good church that'll stick with you and love on you and help you through it, because the devil is going to lose you. And he's going to double attack your life when you surrender to God. 
But if you got a loving church that'll sit around here and help you and listen to you and be friends with you and eat with you and have church with you on Friday nights and Sunday mornings and Wednesdays and recovery meetings on Thursdays, if you can come down here and eat every if you go, if you live in Anderson County and you go hungry, something's wrong with you. Because we feed every day. Three times a day. Three times a day. 3,500 plates a month. Why did TV go out? Let me back up. I messed up. Jesus feeds. Amen. He feeds. You pulled it out, bro. And people talk about the church, talk about this. Well, they sent somebody in down there and they watching y'all. Y'all know church. We're a church that helps people with hurts, habits, and hang up. And if they want to talk about it, if they want to send somebody down here, hey, they might need some Jesus too, so we'll tell them about it. Amen. Uh -huh. Let them come on down here. They ain't nothing wrong with going on down here except every now and then some of the guys will slip up and they get back there and mess. But that happens everywhere. If you got a rehab, it's going to happen. Amen. Show me one and then it don't happen. But then when it does, they won't talk about it. We had, we had seven or eight leave here last week. Got tied up with one dude, one dude in. And it all went down and left. And we're not going to have it. We're not going to have it. We're not going to have it. We're not going to put up with it. We don't have to no more. But we still run a rehab where you got freedom to worship. You got freedom to be a man. You got freedom to come down here, go to your classes, want to change, read the Word of God, apply it to your life. And most important, ain't no 12 steps involved. It's one step, and that's a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. Amen. And if you learn how to do that, watch your life turn around. We'll fill back up. I told Pops we need to keep it down about 20. We can't keep it down 20, Pops. <laughs> They'll be swarming us next week. Because this is a good place. Amen. I want to get everybody to come to church. I want you guys that's in the program bring some of your family down. People that ain't in the church. If you jump, if you run around here jumping churches, jumping to this and jumping to that, you need to quit that. That ain't good. You need to find you a home church. Be involved. Take your money to the storehouse. Wherever your storehouse is, and stay involved in one church. And if you have to go to church and sit on a pew and can't be involved, more than likely you at the wrong church. You hear me? If you have to go to where you can't even talk to your pastor, you probably at the wrong church. You have to go to church and you don't know people's name and you can't be friends and fellowship and talk and have fun and tell jokes and you know don't be telling them white lies too bad you know what I mean yeah. but have fun have fun we play on all the time have a good time <laughs> and God blesses us there in for let me get a little off the call music I want you to know that if you lost <clears throat> Jesus is standing here. I want you to clear your mind. Clear your mind. And just imagine Jesus standing here with his arms open. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's a precious lamb. Listen to me. Ladies of field, we got a policy down here. If a man walks to the altar, we let him go. Because that's, that's a lot to step out and walk up to the altar. If you need me to pray for you, for you, you stop right here. And on your way by, I'll pray for you. If you're scared to walk up here, you raise your hand, I'll come pick, pick your hand with you and walk up here and kneel down beside you. 
because I want you to find the greatest thing in your life is Jesus Christ. He's my God. He's my Lord. He's my Savior. He loves you, too. He loves you. Holy. Everybody just close you. Close your eyes and lift your hands. Listen to the words of this song. Yes, Father, Lord, I pray for your people that's at the altar. Lord, I pray that you'll fill their need and their life. Lord, that, that place is void in their heart. I pray that you'll move in it. I pray that you'll touch it. I pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven and bless them, Lord. Bless them. Because they stepped out in faith. There's kids up here. Step out in faith. And Lord, I pray that you'll touch them. Lord, I pray that you'll take these kids, that you'll use them in a mighty way, that they'll be mighty warriors for you. Mighty, mighty warriors for the kingdom of God. Is there anybody else? Don't you leave here the same way you come. Don't you leave here the same way you come. God loves you. Anya. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you, Tom. He loves you too. You know he loves you. He's got y'all. Hey, you guys, you do. Don't do it like that, brother. Don't do it like that. Hey, you know you got You need to be free. And I want a free life. And being free is when you look in the mirror and you're happy. Free as a bird. Yes, Lord.
Jesus died for all of us. We're going to close out in prayer. I, first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight, being a part of what we're doing in here at Ladies Field. God's so proud of this church. This place is going to do big things for the kingdom of God. And it's going to take more people to be involved for it to, for it to happen. So if you ain't got a home church, all y'all new people sit back here in the back. Well, you, all you got to do down here to join is put gas in your car and just show up. Amen. We'll love on you, okay? <coughs> Father God, we come to you tonight, Lord, with humble heart, and we thank you for allowing us to have a church down here on Airline Road to where people can come and find a relationship with you, Lord, because you are the King. You are the Lord. You are everything. We can't defeat sin without you. And Lord, I pray that everyone in here got something out of this message tonight, that they can learn how to defeat sin. They know they got to accept you first. They know they got to start walking somewhere to have a relationship with you, Lord, because with you, we can do all things. Without you, we lost and we defeated. And Lord, we love you tonight. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. And the church said, Amen. 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 Love y'all.